Welcome back to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. I'm Thomas Miller. We're going to talk about something today that we talked about way back in the early beginnings of the podcast, where Robert gave us a rectification technique that he uses to make sure that a chart is accurate, an accurate birth time. Now, that episode is, I believe, our third episode that we did in the whole series of the podcast. But Robert, just before we launch into these practicums, if you will, I have an experience with it, and then Robert has an experience with it. Tell us the technique again so that it's fresh in our mind here. All right. Isn't another one? Linda Goodman taught me this. You simply take the midheaven, whatever midheaven you get from the time you've been given, and you move it forwards and backwards in the zodiac to make aspects to other planets. And then you read an event based on that aspect and the house that is involved with it and ask a question and to see if you get a correct answer. Uh, Sometimes, for example, uh, the classic one that I remember was reading for, um, I had read for this man's wife. Uh, He was the leading chemotherapist at UCLA at the time. So I had read for her. Then it turns out her husband wanted a reading. So would I come out to their house in Pacific Palisades? So I did. And uh, I met the children and they went upstairs. And now the wife is sitting on the sofa. I'm sitting in a chair at one end of the sofa. And he's sitting in a chair at the opposite end. And I said to him, let me just ask a question to see if your time of birth is right. When you were 10 years old, did your father have some sort of accident or injury to his head? And the man jumped out of his, he said, "Ah, you're psychic. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not. I'll show you this in a second. But did he? And he said, yes. We were ice skating on a lake in Michigan, a frozen lake. And he fell and had a brain concussion. And I said, were you 10? Were you nine? Were you 11? He said, no, I was 10. So I moved down beside him and I said, look, you don't know anything about astrology, but you do know that Mars is the old God of war, right? He said, yeah. And I said, well, Mars in astrology rules accidents and injuries, among other things. And here it is down here in the fourth house in your chart, which is associated with the father. And it's in the sign of Aries, which rules the head and the brain. And this midheaven, look at the the point directly overhead when you were born, is 10 degrees away from being exactly opposite this Mars in your fourth house. So I asked you about age 10, one degree for a year, age 10, an accident or injury involving your father to the head. So it was very, I said, so there's nothing psychic about it. It's all mathematics. So that was, again, one of the first of many, many, many times I've I've done that. Well, if you get a yes to the event, but he had said, well, I was actually 12. All right, then you adjust the midheaven by two degrees. And now using that revised midheaven, you move it again forward and backward to make another aspect to a planet and ask a question about that. And if you can, basically, all you need are two two events that are accurate, and you've got it. Then well, you want to test it. If you have to revise the midheaven a little bit, you want to bring that midheaven up to the current age. So if the man is 40, you add 40 degrees to that new midheaven, that revised midheaven. Move it and see if it, if it fits his current age. And it will. So uh, you don't have to go through I, these astrology programs that, oh, ask the client 20 questions or get 20 events from the life. And so why? You can do this. And, and the, the, the nice thing about this technique, Thomas, is that as you do it, you're also performing what looks like magic. And this is what everybody wants from astrology. Tell me something you couldn't possibly know. Well, you're not kidding. And we have a couple of practicum examples here. So on that point, the one that came to me, and this is a student-teacher thing, because Robert has, we've not talked about this, but I wanted to throw this out. 
I, I sent an email so he knows the structure of it, but here was the deal. Somebody had a 30-minute window that was likely the time. And just about halfway in between, not quite, was the suggested birth time. So I did exactly what you said. What are some major markers, especially prior to 30 years old? Death of a male sibling. So I looked at the chart and I said, how old were you when your male sibling, your brother, died? I was 25. This didn't take me but a second because, the get this, Robert, the midpoint is at 25. I looked straight down to the third house because that's siblings, right? Right. And there, sitting by itself in the third house in the equal house system was Mars at 25 degrees. Now of this what sign? Virgo. Okay. So the midheaven is in Pisces. This happened many de- several decades ago. So the healing from the event had been long since taken place. But I can tell you there was a gasp and a long pause. Mm -hmm. and followed by probably the typical response you get, oh, my God. I think you went even further than that, didn't you? I asked further because of the story that you just told. I said, did it somehow involve an injury to the head? And I didn't know. I didn't know how the death took place. But I followed exactly what you talked about and thinking that it could have been an automobile accident, could have gone through a windshield, could have been thrown out of the car, that kind of thing. It was death by suicide to the head. And see, Thomas, what you just did without trying is immediately you established astrology's validity by something physical, not not some personality like, oh, you have a sunny disposition and you love to dance. Not that. Did you lose a sibling, and did it involve the head? Now, in this case, the degree was exact with the midheaven, so there was no moving the midheaven. Ah, okay. But the degree of the planet was exactly the year that, that the person was, yes. I asked, how old were you when your brother died? Not how old was your brother. How old were Mm -hmm, you? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 25. And there it was, exact. Mm -hmm, Is that mm -hmm. a correct use of the technique? You bet, absolutely. And see, once you've done that, Thomas, just with a couple of events like that, you don't have to prove astrology or yourself anymore. You will during the course of the reading, but you don't have to. You've already delivered what every client wants is some magic. They want the magic of tell me something you couldn't possibly know. Now, if you had just did it. Yeah, just did it. Now, if you had that direct of a correlation, that's a big event. It's within the first 30 years and it's exact. I mean, it's the same number. Would you would you look any further? No, no reason. No, that's a correct birth time. Absolutely. Print it. Go on. Start reading the chart. Okay. Absolutely. Now, you had one in a reading recently, too. Yeah, just a few days ago. Same thing. Sibling. She um, had her, her son at 1645, 17 Taurus in her ninth house, conjunct her midheaven at 19 Taurus, so three, three degrees. And they are opposite Neptune in her third house, in Scorpio and retrograde, which makes it even worse, if you will. So I'm looking at the loss of a sibling very early in her life. Neptune is at 12 degrees Scorpio. So it's exactly four degrees opposite her son. And I said to her, because Scorpio is death, among other things. And I said, did you lose a sibling? I mean, very, very early in your life. Like, oh, I don't know, by age two? And she gasped. She said, oh, my God, I cannot believe you can see that. I was born a twin, and my twin died 
when I, when she didn't live that long, I think she lived about a year, maybe two years and she died. So boom, there was the magic all done. Didn't have to prove astrology to her. And so we went from, but we talked about it at some length, what that experience meant for her in terms of Neptune death and early, early and very personal experience of that most babies are not born into a situation like that, but she was. So she, from day one, was acquainted with death and loss, which most babies aren't really aware of until later. She was aware of it practically from birth. It was her twin who died. And we started talking about the meaning of this and, and the idea of souls and the idea of this experience still being with her and in fact it it deepened her experience of life and her interest in things like astrology and metaphysics and spirituality this loss did and it also sets herself up psychologically for all of her life she is aware everything dies everything dies so it's a strange way to be raised raised from birth having an awareness that everything dies yeah. everybody dies what, a, what an early consciousness of that because twins are so bonded yeah exactly hey let's do something here that just came to me as we were as you were telling this and i was telling this we both had sibling examples so let's pinpoint a couple of key places in the chart where people look for certain things if they want to play with this technique themselves so if you're talking about siblings that's obviously you first place you should look is the third house correct Right. All right. What about mom? If some key event happened to mom, and remember, the technique is best used if it's before you're age 30. So a lot of things can happen to our moms before 30. Where do we find mom in the chart? Mother is ruled by the 10th house. And like every other astrologer, Thomas, in the beginning, some books would say, oh, the parent of the opposite sex is ruled by the 10th. Other astrology books, was well, both parents are ruled by both houses because they both play. Well, that's all well and good until you have a client saying, my mother is sick. Can you see anything? You need to know which of those two houses rules the mother. They can't both. Because what you're going to do is look at derivative houses. You're going to take the mother's sixth house. The best book that I have ever read, and I have to go back to it, Mark Edmund Jones' book on orary astrology. Whether it's natal astrology, orary astrology, mundane astrology, I don't care. This guy, Mark Edmund Jones, in that book, gives the most comprehensive descriptions of the house's meanings and why they mean what they do that I have ever read anywhere. He's a difficult writer to read, but he is spot on. And once you've read that book, you understand the difference between the fourth house parent and the 10th house parent. The 10th house parent is the mother because she is the day-to-day -day authority over the child. This is very sexist and very traditional, but the mother is the one in olden days who stayed at home, and she was there when the kids came home from school. She supervised the kids when they got up and got dressed and went to school. Dad went off to work. So he is the parent of final recourse. And you hear this in the phrase, I'll tell your father when he gets home. Oh, yes. <laughs> we used so, to say that. We, that, was, that was, it's gone now, but we used to say that. <laughs> yeah. So the parent of remote authority is the fourth house parent he's the final recourse and this is again very sexist and paternalistic as hell but nonetheless the distinction suddenly got very clear to me about the mother is your day-to-day -day authority and that's the 10th house 
So now armed with, and he goes into much greater detail than I am here. But once you understand the difference between a mother and a father today, for example, you're reading for people who are in same sex marriages. Well, which one plays the role of the daily authority and which one plays the, the more the final recourse parent? So it becomes, you know, an, an age of gender fluidity and, and same sex marriage. And so when it becomes a little maybe more confusing, but you can still sort these things out. And then what I do is ask very specific questions. I just did this with a client yesterday about health, usually. Uh, so you can look at the mother at the 10th and count six houses ahead. That will be the mother's house of health, which is the third house in a natal chart. And you can read the sign on that house, planets in that house, and begin to ask physical questions because you can't argue with these. Either the mother had a miscarriage or she didn't, you know, that sort of thing. I rectified a chart, Thomas, I had a client that I've known all my life. She finally died about 15 years older than I am. Um, she was a writer that I knew in uh, Los Angeles and she never had her birth time. So I was always using what we call a solar chart, because if you don't have a time of birth, set the chart up for noon and then place the sun on the ascendant. And it's called a solar chart. And it's absolutely as valid as any other kind of chart. So that's all I had had for, I don't know, 30 or more years that we knew each other. Well, she finally had retired to Florida. Tampa, where her brother lived, a very prominent attorney. And I got to see her about two years before she died. She was 80 something then. And I got and spent uh, a few nights with her in Tampa. And the first night we sat down at the table and she said, ah, I didn't tell you, I have my birth time. Well, she had, through the most obscure coincidence I've ever heard in my life she had discovered her birth time. And so I now calculated her chart using her new birth time. Lo and behold, her ascendant and my ascendant were within three degrees of each other. But I asked her a question. I knew her children. She'd had three children. And I said, did your mother have a miscarriage between your brother and your birth? And she gasped again. She said, yes. All right. That's all I needed to know. Totally accurate chart. And then I asked her a second question. I said, was Alan, because she had two sons and a daughter. She had Alan, who was the oldest, and then her, her middle son, Bobby, and then her, her daughter. And I said, was Alan a breach birth? And she said, my God, yes, he was. And again, all that was, was Uranus retrograde in the house that ruled that sun. So if you can ask about physical facts like that, again, you're doing two things at once. You're making sure you do have an accurate chart, but you're also giving them some magic, things you could never know without astrology. So it's validating astrology as you go. And once you've done one or two of those questions, you don't have to prove it anymore. They know that astrology works and they know that you know what you're doing. And you don't have to prove anything anymore from that point on. So you're free to really do a reading. Um, so that that's how I, I use this all the time, really. Well, let's go back to the midheaven piece, because I'd like to mention what you just pointed out. Miscarriage. All right. Is that a death of a sibling, third house? Or is that something affecting the mother, tenth house? Or something else? If you're well, using the midheaven now, not the not the birth order technique, the midheaven exactly. technique. Yeah. If you're using the midheaven technique, a miscarriage in a woman's chart will usually show up, well, it always shows up with afflictions to either the rulers or a planet in the fourth or fifth houses. Sometimes it can be in the sixth. And the reason for this is in a woman's horoscope, if she has more than one child, if she only has one child, then that child is ruled by her fifth house. If she has more than one child, then her first child is ruled by her fourth house. And in a woman's chart, the second child is a sibling to the first child. So the second child is ruled by her sixth, which is the third from the fourth. In other words, the, the sibling third from the fourth house, which rules the first child. And if she has a third child, it's ruled by the eighth house and so on. So you can begin to 
differentiate between the pregnancies. This is true even if a woman has had miscarriages or abortions. If she then goes on to have a baby, that baby will rule by the fifth house. If she has a second baby, it'll be ruled by the fourth house. And I, I had an actress once who <laughs> I just find it. I gave up. I said, how many abortions have you had? And she said, four, does that mean I can't have a baby? I said, no, far from it. You've got a cast iron uterus. You will definitely have another baby. It will probably be a daughter, but four abortions she had had. And nonetheless, first child was a girl. So those are the houses you can look for as far as miscarriages or abortions, the fourth fit in a woman's chart. In a man's chart, because he's not physically having the baby, it's a different experience for him. But nonetheless, in a man's chart, his first child is ruled by the fifth. You have more than one child. So your first child is ruled by your fifth house. The second child is ruled by the seventh. Do you, you only have two children? Yes. Okay. So those are your two children in your chart. But let's say, let's say we were trying to dial in, in that example. So let's say we were trying to dial in my birth time. And I told you, so you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking for correlations. And I said, oh, I know something. There was a miscarriage in between my first and second child. Okay. What would you do with that? You didn't actually have a, mis a miscarriage. No, experience. see, I was saying okay. this is a fictitious All right. example. But All right. just, so, but if you did have, you know, the first thing I would look at probably would be just your fifth house. Unless I was rectifying and you, but just to start, I would probably ask that just from the fifth house. Did you, have you lost a baby? Did you lose a baby through miscarriage? Yes. Then I would move that mid heaven and see what age that might be like. Now, not every event, not every significant event will show up through the mid heaven. So you can't expect every significant event to be reflected by moving that midheaven. But nonetheless, you, you should be able to get at least two or maybe three, if you want, direct hits by questions you ask and the ages with the midheaven. But everybody thinks, I think when they get into this technique, oh, it's going to show me every major. Well, no, it may show up through a transit or through a solar arc. But nonetheless, what you're trying to do is get that midheaven as exact as you can. And the reason that you, you try and hit events in the first 30 years is because once you get past 30, the discrepancy between the midheaven arc can grow a little more significantly with each passing year. So by the time you get up into your 40s and 50s, the event may be off by what looks like a year. And that's okay, as long as these earlier events were, were right on target. That's why I try and keep the questions to events under 30 years, if I can. Okay. Let's, let's hit a couple more here. Uh, people often, families, mom and dads, get divorced. Where would you look for divorce? Fourth and tenth. All right. Back to mom and dad. What about moving? And there, there are other places, for example, full moon babies, which I am, sun opposite moon at birth is a predisposition to parents who will divorce and separate just anybody born under a full moon and obviously not everybody born under a full moon will have parents who divorce but that is one indication of it and i like to see things maybe three ways before i say anything i really do and you but it's it's aspects involving the 10th and the 4th house and aspects to the planets that rule those and then you can throw in aspects to the sun the father and the moon the mother so by the time you've looked at those maybe three different perspectives you'll it's all adding them up well here are three indications for divorce here's one indication for a lasting marriage well that's three to one so the odds are the parents got divorced and you'll be right Okay. And then another thing that happens to people usually is you'll be asking somebody again, you're looking at a midheaven that's at a particular location and they'll say, well, we moved when I was seven. I remember we moved from Cincinnati to Albuquerque you know, or something. Yeah. I, yeah. Never forget it. Never forget that move. I was seven. Well, where would you look for a move? The same thing, the midheaven, and that a move is one of the things that I ask about frequently, because that will often show up with the midheaven. So uh, I don't know, in your chart, what do you have? The midheaven is at six Pisces, right opposite Pluto. We did move when I was nine. 
we changed houses, didn't move towns, but we moved from one home to another. But I'm not, well, I said seven. Sorry. It was nine. I was nine. nine. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's more like, but yeah. So, so, uh, in fact, I'm still looking at this woman's chart who was born a twin and lost the twin at birth. Uh, and she also, uh, cause I asked her about a move at age, uh, three actually, mainly because her midheaven is three degrees away from her son at birth in the ninth house. And they did, they did move at three. So again, you, you keep hitting events. And if they're, if they correlate with that midheaven, great. You only need two of them, maybe three. And if those three are accurate, you're done. You don't have to bother anymore. You've got an accurate chart. In fact, one of these, I'm not sure if it was this woman I was talking about with the loss of the twin, but she had had her chart rectified by another astrologer. Well, that's fine, except I don't trust anybody else because there are a million amateur astrologers out there who may not or may or may know what they're doing. But when I asked her the question about the loss of the sibling at that age, uh, the minute she said yes, I said, then your astrologer is right. This is your time of birth. That's all I needed to know. So again, back to the move example. With that, I'm thinking third house represents short trips. Ninth house represents long distance over water, kind of technically. But where would you look around for a correlation for an early move? Well, in either the third or the ninth, using the midheaven, as long as they moved at all, I'm not particularly interested whether it was a short or long distance one. I just want to know, was there a move in that year, which will show up in the third night, but especially in the fourth and tenth as well, or to the rulers of those houses. So this woman who lost uh, a sibling, for example, that was from this opposition to Neptune and her third in Scorpio. But at the same time, they moved when she was three. And that's simply the midheaven conjunctor sun in the ninth house. Now it's in Taurus, which doesn't necessarily mean short or long distance, but in fact, the sun and the midheaven are in her ninth house at birth. So you might, might go for a long distance move. Well, I've learned better. A move is a move, whether it's long or short. It can show up in the third house. It can show up in the ninth. It might show up in the 10th even. If, if the planet involved happens to rule the fourth, or the 10th, either one, because that fourth, 10th axis usually has some connection with moving. So as you, you know, as you grow and understand a little bit more about astrology, you see that things can show up often in several different ways, and they tend to confirm, can confirm each other. So that when, once you've seen something two ways, much less three ways, you can be pretty sure that, uh, that it's happened. Whereas if you only see it one way, um, it mm, you may be off. That's why I like to ask usually two two questions or more. But then when you get something like, did your father have an accident or injury to his head or face, his head or brain when you were ten? That you couldn't be more specific. So when you get a yes answer to that, you're done. All right. Now let me ask you about that example. That's a really good example because there was a clear 10 degree separation between Mars and the Midheaven. So you don't have to do a bunch of <laughs> sign hopping math and, you know, moving <laughs> that planet That's right. That's that around right. so much. It's just a straight 10. What if that Mars was five degrees? Can you use that multiple technique? So five times two is 10. You get there by just doubling the degree. You Does could. That work? I don't. You could. I want that midheaven to hit something exact because all I'm interested in is getting the midheaven accurate. So I wouldn't bother with multiplying degrees at that stage. I, mean, I want the thing to be exact. I want that 10 degrees to be 10 years. And if he had said, no, actually, we were 12, I would have adjusted the midheaven two degrees and then used that new midheaven to ask another question by moving it, you see. Yeah. But I wouldn't, at, at that stage, the idea of multiplying a planet's degree, I really only use it, use it to see when is that planet's archetype active in a person's life. So, for example, you have Neptune at 5 and 47 of Virgo. So, let's say six degrees Virgo every six years of your life Neptune and Virgo in the third house will be active and predominant in your life every six years 
And just, I just want to clarify something so that people are not confused by this. When you say move the midheaven, so if he was saying, like in the example just mentioned, the guy says, no, I wasn't 10, I was 12. So the midheaven correlating to 10 degrees from the zero is off by two degrees. Yes. Then what you do is you take your chart, and hopefully the technology of the chart that you're using can do this, and you move that midheaven back in this case what would be about eight minutes would get you two degrees so now you have the 12 degree separation where the mars location is in in areas i mean that's just to clarify you really physically are changing the birth time that's exactly what you're trying to do is get the exact birth time that gives you the exact midheaven so once you've got the midheaven accurate then you know basically you adjust the time four minutes for every degree. So if you had to change the mid heaven two degrees to make it exact for, for an event like that, that's roughly eight minutes of time. So then you go back into the computer program, change the time of birth by eight minutes, either forward or back, to get that exact mid heaven, And then you print that chart out and use it from then on. And what really gets cool with this too, is I know that you teach with the solar arcs and then the secondary progressions, that basically, once you have that accurate birth time, you can run it through all of these different ways of slicing and dicing the chart, and you'll find that those things then are accurate, they show up where they should, and it's really a wow when you change something that you thought was this or that. We have to remember, even when the hospital says you were born at 1.42 p.m., what are the chances after that birth certificate is issued Who's saying that they had their eye exactly on that clock and on that baby at exactly the same time? <laughs> it's exactly it's right. rare. <laughs> you know, I, the last time I really demonstrated this was for Kepler. It was for this webinar, three-hour webinar I did on solar arcs. And I only used two horoscopes for the whole three hours. One was Donald Trump's and the other one was the United States. Well, Donald Trump was born with a very, very late degree of Leo rising. Well, you have to re rectify a chart like that. He either has Leo on the first cusp or he has Virgo on the first cusp. So using the midheaven that, that's on his certificate, I moved it to conjunct his son in Gemini in his 10th house. And it was off, as I recall, by one degree, because at age 20, Fred Trump, his father, made him the head of Trump Org. So that's a very young age to be elevated to a position like that. Now, it was family, and that's why. But nonetheless, when I corrected the midheaven, I think it was off by one degree. So I just corrected the midheaven by four degrees. I mean, four minutes of time, which made for the one degree difference. And then I moved that revised midheaven forward to when he got elected president. And it hit exactly, I can't remember what, in his chart now. And then, then I said, the reason you have to rectify this chart is because he has such a late degree of Leo rising. And if he has Virgo rising, look at what we're going to do here. We are going to look at the sexes of his children in order. And if he has Leo rising, then it works out exactly. His first child was a boy. His second child was a daughter. His third child was a boy. His fourth daughter child was a daughter, Tiffany. His fifth child was barren, and so on. If he had Virgo rising, all of those would be thrown off. You would get the wrong gender. And then I said, let's try this. Let's look at the sexes of his siblings using this rectified chart, Leo rising. First sibling. A girl, his sister Mary, a lawyer. His second was a boy, his brother, who died of alcoholism, which showed up with the Neptune, and so on. So it worked out, and this is in front of a group of, I don't know, 50, 60 people. It worked out perfectly for both his children's genders and his siblings' genders. So you know that he, in fact, has 29 degrees Leo rising. Now, is this a technique you can use, like the examples we've been giving you're dialing things in certainly within an hour and in the cases we've been talking about even 30 minutes or 15 minutes what if somebody just literally doesn't know i mean maybe they they grew up in a foster home and they have no there's no record 
What do you do with that? Nothing. Okay. If, if you don't have a time of birth to start, I, I've only had one client, and believe me, it's at this point over 50,000. I don't know what it is, but one client, she was born in Asia. And I'm trying to remember if she was born in Vietnam. Um, she was adopted. So she not only did not know her time of birth, she did not even know her date of birth. Never. So you're sunk. And I told her, you're the only human being I've ever known who doesn't even know the day they were born. And in an odd way, this frees you from ever having a reliable natal horoscope. All you can ever use is orary astrology. Yeah. which is a fascinating state for some soul to be in who doesn't have a, much less a, a, the time. She didn't even have the day. The only other instance I had once back in LA, this guy I'd read for, he did have a time of birth, but in the rectification of it, I told him, I said, not only were you not born at 1145 near midnight, you weren't even born on this day. You were born after midnight of the next day, the start of the next day. Well, that was that. Never thought I'd ever hear anything more. And while I was house sitting for Linda Goodman in Cripple Creek, he phoned me out of the blue. He was going to be in Colorado Springs. He would love to see me again. And he had something interesting to tell me. He said, so I drove down. And we met and had lunch, and he whips out a birth certificate that he finally had. And sure enough, he was born after midnight at the beginning of the next day. That's the only time I've ever had that kind of validation, but wow. it kind of blew me away, too. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, if you don't have if you don't have any time at all, then at best, every horoscope you can concoct or erect is going to be speculative. You can never know. Right. Now, what you can do, if you have some starting time for a birth time, you can absolutely decide, all right, this, like with Donald Trump, he either has Leo rising or he has Virgo rising. Then I, I start asking a series of physical health questions because you can't argue with those. They're either they happen or they're, they're there or they're not unlike personality questions, which can be interpreted in a number of ways. So I will use health to make sure I've got at least at least the right sign rising. And then you can refine it down from there if you if you really want to work at it. So if you at least have a starting time, you've got a shot. But without a starting time of birth, every chart you come up with is can only be speculative. You'll never have a way of proving otherwise. So in that that case, I just simply use a solar chart. Very good. With, Such a powerful technique. Well, it's really helpful, especially if, if you want to use the midheaven and the ascendant in solar arcs, for example, you have to rectify the chart. Otherwise, if it's not rectified, then solar arcs for the midheaven and the ascendant can be off by a year or two or three. The only way to know it is to rectify. Well, we hope that clarifying this and giving a couple of recent personal examples helps you with it. So, Robert, thanks again, as always. We have a Discord channel where the conversation is continuing. Also, a couple of other podcasts, Facebook group, etc. So, plenty of resources to stay in touch. Reading information with Robert. Also, all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. <music>